Good morning, children, and welcome to Sunday School. May God bless you all. Before we start our lesson, let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, I would like to thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us on Mount Calvary. Father, Lord, we thank you for today, Sunday. Father, Lord, come and teach us. Father, Lord, we want to understand your word. Father, Lord, we want to be saved, sanctified, baptized by the Holy Ghost. Father, Lord, we want to reign with you eternally. Father, Lord, bless us today. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So children, our today's lesson is Lesson 16D, titled, The Wise Men Come. Our memory verse is going to be recited by Micah. Notice the which they saw in the east went before them. Matthew 2, 9. May God bless you. Our Bible text is going to be taken from Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. We are just going to pick a few verses to read. I'm going to read verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. May God bless the reading of his word. So children, who are these three wise men and why were they wise? So the three wise men, as we heard from the word of God, they were from the east. They were wise because they studied stars in the sky. They saw a bright shining star, a very big shining star in the sky. It was an extraordinary peculiar star shining bright and they wondered this star is telling us something and they planned to follow the star they followed the star in following the star they went to jerusalem to King Herod Palace, looking for baby Jesus. When they reached Herod Palace, they saw Herod. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Herod heard about baby Jesus being born. He was afraid because he thought baby Jesus came to take his kingdom. So he sent the three wise men to Bethlehem to look for baby Jesus. And he instructed them that if they found baby Jesus, they should tell him. But King Herod was not wise because he had a different plan altogether. He wanted to kill baby Jesus. So the three wise men departed. They followed the star. Yeah, as our memory verse said, Lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. So they followed the star to Bethlehem. 
the star stood where baby Jesus was in a manger. The three wise men were overjoyed to see baby Jesus. They fell down and worshiped Jesus. They brought three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, because they were happy to see baby Jesus. So we want to thank God for the three wise men because they followed the star up until they saw baby Jesus. So even us two children, we can give God our hearts. We need to be obedient to his word. We have got the Bible, which instructs us, which teaches us. We need to follow all the instructions until we reach heaven. As our key statements say, follow instructions. So today, children, we want to follow instructions in praying and giving our hearts to God and also sharing the good news with others. So thank you for listening, children. May God bless you all. That's the end of our lesson. For activities ages two to five, color the picture below. The wise men brought beautiful gifts to Jesus. And for ages six to eight, the activity is titled, Follow the Star. Help the wise men find their way through the maze as they follow the star to find baby Jesus. And our next lesson is lesson 17A, titled, Current's Question. May God bless you all. Goodbye, children. Bye-bye. Good morning everyone. I hope you're all okay and I hope you had a great time at school this week. Our lesson today is titled Sticking Together and our memory verse for this week is Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Psalm 133 verse 1. As you can tell from our memory verse today we're going to be speaking about unity and the lesson for this week was about Tobias a young child who was restless and went on a school trip and unfortunately hindered the experience of the day because of his own behaviour. Because he chose to act on his own way and do his own thing, he ended up interfering with the plans of the rest of his class. And so today we are going to talk about how important unity is. Well, first of all, actually, we're going to talk about what unity is and why it is necessary, especially as young Christians. So we have our Bible passages for this week, which are Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 to 16 and Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. We may not read all these verses, but I think it's important for us to get some sort of context as to what we're going to be learning this week. But just before we read our Bible passages, I'm going to show you the AV room here at Peckham. So if you don't know, I'm Ayo and I'm an AV member here in Peckham Church. So as you can see, we've got all this equipment. We've got all this equipment around here. And one thing about audio and visual equipment is if one thing is out of place, none of it is going to work together. If the plugs are not plugged in, if the cables are not inserted into the right ports, these, the all this equipment, nothing's going to work. And that should give you a little hint as to what we're going to be talking about today. Ephesians is talking specifically about unity and maturity in the body of Christ. And Paul is writing in this letter to the Christians there in Ephesus. And he was basically urging the followers of Jesus to live a life that was worthy of the calling that they had received. They had been given the message of Jesus and he was encouraging them to live a life that would be evidence that God 
was in their lives that god had changed their lives a big evidence of jesus having an impact on our lives is us living in unity with other people i'm just going to read from verses two to six with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace there is one body and one spirit even as you are called in one hope of your calling one lord one faith one baptism one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Let's go a bit more down in the chapter. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the uni unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. The whole essence of what Paul was saying in this letter was that if they were able to be lowly, be meek, be long-suffering, forbear one another in love, and then acknowledge that the different roles amongst them in their community were for the growth of their faith, then by God's grace, they would abound in unity. And at the end of the day, they would look more and more like Christ. So what is unity? You guys think about that for a second. When you think of unity, what do you, what do you think? The definition of unity is the quality or state of being one. Now, that is just a secular, normal dictionary definition. But if we now want to tailor it to ourselves as Christians, the definition of unity is the quality of state of being one in Christ. Now, what is the importance of unity? Unity is very important because if you came to a church where some people believe one thing, another group of people believe one thing, there are some people that think evangelism is important, but then there's other people that don't think evangelism is important. There's some people that believe in salvation. There's some people that don't believe in salvation. The church will become a very chaotic and confusing place. And where there is confusion, there cannot be growth. Where there is confusion, Jesus does not abide there because he doesn't give us a spirit of confusion. And so as Christians, the reason why unity is very important for us is because it helps us to bond together over a common goal, a common theme, which is for the glory of God. The most important thing I want all of us to take away from this lesson is that unity first starts with us having a relationship with God. In order for us to be unified with those around us, we cannot do that in our own power because we all have our different personalities. We all have our different mindsets. We all have our different walks of life. You know, we all come from different cultures, different upbringings. But the only thing that can really unite us to our foundational core is if we have a relationship with God. Once we have a relationship with God, which means to be saved, then his Holy Spirit can work within us to help us to be like-minded with other Christians because those other Christians will also have a relationship with God and in having a relationship with God, God is molding us all into his beautiful body of believers. Once we have a relationship with God, it will lead to us having a more fluid and more natural and more beautiful relationship with those around us. So what is the difference between Christian unity and unity amongst people that aren't Christians. Christian unity is deeply rooted in the fact that we believe in Jesus Christ and we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so even when life is not consistent and when the cares and worries of life seem to be tossing us all about, we have that grounded foundation that we believe in. Whereas people that are not Christians, they can be unified in certain things that maybe they all support a football team but that unity of them all supporting a football team doesn't enable them to be unified in other areas of their lives but Christianity as a whole helps us to be unified on every front because it's something that should influence every aspect of the way that we live. Let's talk about some biblical examples where two or more people worked in unity and achieved positive results. Paul and Silas, two men, two followers of Jesus who were imprisoned and decided that, you know what, we're going to pray and sing together in unity. And just from them praying and singing hymns together, there was a violent earthquake that shook the prison. And literally the prison doors flew open and their chains came off. Can you imagine that? Just them doing that act 
of praying and worshipping God in unity led to that complete release. And then they also used that opportunity to bring other people into that unity with Christ because they spoke to the jailer, the person who was like monitoring them there in prison. And they actually told him that if you believe in Jesus, you will be saved and that will then lead to your household being saved. And that is what Christian unity brings forth. It brings forth more and more and more unity because once we are saved, we can then evangelize and live lives that please Christ, which will then influence those around us, which then bring them into the fold and help us to further the gospel with the way that we live our lives the last question or the last discussion point we're going to discuss is how is it possible to have spiritual unity among individuals with diverse personalities backgrounds and preferences we all as we as i mentioned earlier we all come from different backgrounds different walks of life different cultures we all have different personalities there's different things i find funny to things you might find funny sometimes those different personality types and those different backgrounds can get in the way of unity because they might lead us to think but I'm right and she's wrong so if I'm right and she's wrong I don't need to be in agreement with her and I'm going to do things my own way but as we can see from our lesson this week Tobias did things his own way which led to him ruining the experience for his friends we don't want to have that type of character that only looks for our own way Yes, we can have different personalities and God loves that. God made us all individually unique. But in having our own personalities, we also have to submit to the will of God. And in submitting to the will of God, that a lot of the time actually looks like preferring your brother, preferring your sister over yourself. I hope you guys enjoyed our lesson this week. I hope it's encouraged you to understand unity for yourself and why why unity is important, especially as a Christian. This week's lesson activity is called Let's Work Together. On the grid below, write the second letter of the word or picture in that square. Then write each word in the correct order in the key verse below. Make sure you do it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for teaching us about unity and the importance of it as Christians. We ask that, Lord, as we begin this new week, that, Lord, you would give us hearts that want to be unified, that you will give us hearts that firstly want to be unified with you, but also want to be unified with other people. We pray that your Holy Spirit teaches us this lesson and helps us to remember this lesson and helps us to have this lesson as a point of contact for whenever we need to understand what unity is. We pray that you bless the service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next week's lesson will be lesson 122 titled Telling a Friend. See you guys later. Bye.